competition. Has been what we think at this point an artificial seismic event in northern in, in North Korea, in the northern part of North Korea, and of course we've been waiting for the possibility. Yes, we've been waiting for many, many weeks for this to happen. Of course, this is now taking place under the leadership of the new Korean leader Kim Jong Un, and there was some, of course, there was of course some speculation that he may take the country in a different direction. But now it appears that Kim Jong Un, after successfully launching a rocket last month, or December rather of last year, and now carrying out what appears to be the test of a nuclear device. There does appear to be a new pattern which is now emerging from North Korea. We saw this with the launch of that rocket. There appeared to be some kind of bluff in play by the North Korean leader pretending or giving out signals that that launch may not go ahead and then a day or two later, it happened. Similar thing happened in the lead up to this. Uh, there were some signals coming from the North Koreans that uh, the United States had jumped to conclusions that a nuclear test was on its way and then another few days later we have this nuclear test. We're getting this information from the US Geological Survey which reported a seismic disturbance in uh, North Korea in the northern part of the country. The seismic event was centered uh, near the site of Pyongyang's two previous nuclear tests. Chinese experts have confirmed seismic activity in North Korea about 4.9 magnitude. South Korea says it detected what it called an artificial earthquake north of its border. Japanese meteorologists say the tremor, though, was different from what you might consider to be a normal earthquake. No further information at this stage is known. There's not a lot of official confirmation coming from anyone, least of all from Pyongyang. North Korea, as we've been telling you, widely expected to carry out this nuclear test any day now. Pyongyang has vowed to stage a high-intensity action. We are following this story across the region. We have our Anna Corrin standing by in Seoul, South Korea. We also have Alex Zorbert there in Tokyo. Now, let's just go to our Anna Corrin, who is in Seoul for us right now. Anna, you were on military maneuvers just a few days ago with the South Korean and the U.S. militaries there. There is a great deal of preparation in South Korea for this event, but essentially, given what's happened, what can the South Koreans do right now? Yeah, John, as we were discussing yesterday, this is very much a waiting game. The test we presume has happened. That is what this artificial seismic disturbance is, a 4.9 magnitude quake, artificial quake, with a depth of something like one kilometre. And experts are saying that is much deeper than the previous test back in 2006 and 2009. But as far as the military is concerned, there are something like 28,000 US Marines based here on the Korean Peninsula, as, long as, the, as well as the, the South Korean military. They just wait. It's un very unlikely that there'll be any uh, preemptive action from from this side of the border. Uh, you know, North Korea has conducted tests in the past. We mentioned those two previous uh, nuclear tests back in 2006, 2009. Normally, there is condemnation. There are words. Uh, South Korea will obviously uh, come out and, and make some very strong statement backed by the international community. There will be UN sanctions, tougher UN sanctions, which perhaps China will again back as they did after that rocket launch in December. But militarily, John, it is business as usual. Everyone is on high alert, but it would be highly unlikely if there was to be any action taken. And a standby, because I, I want to get some uh, reaction there, if, if there is any, from the President-elect Park. She's made a lot of strong statements uh, in the lead up uh, over the last couple of weeks regarding North Korea tests. But I want you to stand by because we have Elise Labbert uh, on the line now from the State Department uh, with some more information. Elise, is there any reaction at this late hour? 11 p.m. here in the United States on the East Coast. Uh, anything coming out of the State Department just yet? Um, John, well, I'm speaking to sources, a senior administration official telling me U.S. is working to confirm. But I'm not really sure that this comes as a surprise, John. I was speaking to one senior official this morning, and they said that a test could come at any moment. So I think that the U.S. has been bracing for this, planning for this, as we've been discussing. There's been a lot of uh, kind of fooling around by North Korea in terms of when the date would be, just as there was when, when they had their uh, rocket launch and they extended the date and then they ended up doing it before before this whole extension. So I think there's definitely been uh, definitely been plans um, to that this test would take take 
place. Now, what happens now? I think that the U.S. is going to act very similar to as it has with all, all of these rocket tests. I think they'll be going to the United Nations, going for some tough, swift action. But the question is, how does the United States, South Korea, uh, Japan, uh, China, all the parties in the in the diplomacy with North Korea deal with these continued North Korean antics, deal with these habitual tests. I think from the United States and its partners, you're going to see a much more robust sanctions policy. I know that they're looking at, you know, a lot of sanctions regime along the lines of what they've done with Iran, John, working on squeezing North Korea as, as, as tight as those sanctions are on North Korea, trying to squeeze it a little bit further to try and get a change in behavior. Yeah, and North I think Co they'll definitely be going to the United Nations in the coming days. North Korea, a perennial problem that no one seems to know what to do with. They have, a, they have these rocket launches, they carry out these nuclear tests, they impose sanctions, and yet nothing seems to change. You mentioned Japan there. What will the Japanese be doing in uh, a reaction to all of this? Alex Zolbert is standing by in Tokyo for more on that. Alex, there are a few good options here. Uh, what is Tokyo likely to say? What is it likely to do in the coming hours? Well, John, just in the past 20 minutes or so, we heard from Japan's chief cabinet secretary, and he basically talked about, you know, what the uh, what they were looking at in terms of the seismic activity, but he would not weigh in issuing any stern comments or any condemnation about this morning's activity out of North Korea. It's safe to say that what the thinking would be, John, is that they want to get on the same page as other neighbors in the region, the likes of South Korea, China, Russia, and try to come together and form some statement on this. But for right now, they are not issuing any comment in terms of any condemnation about this, this event in North Korea this morning, which, as we've all said, John, is somewhat surprising because it, this event is not unexpected. We've been expecting this for, for several weeks now. And, of course, this follows that rocket launch back in December. John? It's all but that. Um, we have the South Korean foreign minister who I believe is standing by, Yoon Min Han, who is, is joining us now. Minister, could you please tell us your reaction to this news that there has possibly been a test of a nuclear device by your neighbors to the north? Well, it was not a surprise because North Korea has warned several times that they will carry out the third nuclear test. Can you confirm for us that this has in fact been a test of a nuclear device? It's still, it's still uh, not clear whether North Korea carried out the uh, third nuclear test or not, but all the symptom seismic uh, effect uh, monitored in the South Korea uh, is, uh, can be interpreted as they did the nuclear test. So can you tell us what will the process be now? How long will it take before we can actually get confirmation of what's happened? Well, it takes um, at least um, uh, one or two days because uh, we don't know yet uh, what the exactly uh, caused the seismic effect of that, of that kind of magnitude. It was 5.1, but uh, in the previous time, the, in 2009, the magnitude was uh, around uh, 4.6. So it's much greater than the, uh, the previous one in 19, uh, 2009. Just to go over the bleeding obvious here, spell out what, what are the concerns here? I mean, the North Koreans have carried out two nuclear tests in the past. This is now the third, if it's confirmed, and we're assuming that it will be. Where does this all lead to? What are you most worried about? Well, if it is confirmed that North Korea tested the third one, it means that North Korea become real nuclear power. Then it will undermine whole uh, security uh, structure in Northeast Asia. It will undermine the whole peaceful uh, situation of, uh, in this region. So you're saying, sir, that one test could be a fluke, the second one a good shot, but the third one means that they definitely have the, uh, a nuclear ability. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's right. Uh, North Korea uh, wanted to uh, have miniaturized uh, nuclear bomb. So if North Korea successfully uh, tested the third one, it will mean that North Korea succeeded in making a, a smaller a uh, miniaturized nuclear bomb that can be carried on the uh, long-range missile. So this, is, this could be, in your estimation, a real game-changer? Yes, that's correctly. It will uh, change all the, the security structure in Northeast Asia. So what do we do next? What, what is the next step? Because everything that has been tried in the past, sanctions on sanctions on sanctions, targeting the regime, cutting North Korea off from the rest of the world, has had little effect. 
As United States already passed the security resolution in which uh, they uh, said that uh, a significant action will be taken if North Korea touched the third one, that means that um, the United States and international uh, community will levy much harsher sanctions, such as introducing the financial sanction, uh, like this one in uh, earlier 2005, uh, like uh, a sanction levied on PDA. And also a pre security initiative um, will be implemented. That means that all the aircraft and uh, ships of North Korea will be interdicted and will be scrutinized. If, if I'm not mistaken, though, the last time those sort of uh, measures were taken, the North Koreans said that they would retaliate if their ships were intercepted at sea and were boarded, uh, and they essentially, th those actions went nowhere. Well, I don't think North Korea has, has the mean to retaliate uh, uh, against the South Korea and the United States. They all the time had making a lot of bluffing, so... We, our uh, joint deterrence capabilities are much stronger uh, than North Korea, so I don't think North Korea will uh, do anything uh, uh, more than they did in the past. Okay, there are two camps out there which uh, essentially come down to this. There are those who believe that China has the ultimate sway over the North Koreans, essentially because the Chinese uh, supply them with food, with fuel, essentially bankroll the place, keep them afloat. And there are those who believe that the Chinese have little influence over the North Koreans. Where do you stand? I think China has uh, influence on North Korea, but uh, the problem is that uh, China seems to pay uh, more focus on uh, maintaining North Korean regime as it is, rather than denuclearize North Korea. So uh, China uh, really did not uh, its uh, best uh, to, uh, to prevent North Korea from uh, testing uh, the third nuclear test. So. Uh, China should um, uh, apply more harsher sanctions against North Korea if he wants to stop the North Korean nuclear program. So you're not looking towards the Chinese for much help at this point, I, I, I gather? Well, I think in the United Nations, China uh, cooperated with um, the United States and other Western countries. But what I meant is that uh, North Korea, uh, China should, uh, can do a lot more than what they have done now. Do you expect that they will? Well, I think so, because uh, it will also undermine the security environment of China. Okay, so I think we will leave it there, but we appreciate uh, your, your insights, your experience. Uh, that was Yu myung Hwan, who is a former South Korean foreign minister, joining us on the line, uh, spelling out exactly what could happen over the next couple of days. And we did touch on it there, the role that China could play in all of this. Once again, the United States will be looking towards Beijing to take a leadership role because of the influence or the perceived influence that the Chinese have over uh, their closest friends, the North Koreans. Um, but right now we will say uh, goodbye to our viewers in the United States. But for everyone else here at CNN International, we'll continue on with our coverage of this breaking news story. Let's go to Matthew Chance who is live in Beijing for more on this. Matthew, it is the Chinese New Year holiday. The place is pretty much closed down. You could shoot a cannon down the main street of Beijing and not hit anybody. So what, when can we expect something to come out of the government there? It's very difficult to say. ...civil war in the GOP between Donald Trump calling Karl Rove a total loser...